Now, later today, leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, will deliver a keynote speech at Labour's party conference where he's expected to set out some of the party's big ideas and policies. Uh, one of the big policies already trailed at the weekend is that Labour would scrap the government's Rwanda migrant plan if elected even if it worked and stopped the boats. Here to talk about this and some of today's other big stories is Rafe Heidel Manku, senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. Uh, thanks for joining me, uh, Rafe. Uh, has Starmer misjudged the public mood on immigration? I mean, this is an extraordinary thing to say, isn't it? Uh, interviewed by Laura Kunzberg at the weekend. Uh, so the government gets the Rwanda scheme going and it works. Uh, it sends the deterrent message and all the boats stop. Uh, when you get into power, Keir, what would you do? I'd reverse uh, the Rwanda scheme, and so therefore, I assume, allow the boats to start crossing again. It's mad. It's, it's a remarkable position. You know, we were all told that Sir Keir Starmer understood the, the concerns and issues of the Red Wall, for example, and he wants to get their votes back. And we know from all the evidence, immigration is either the number one or the number two issue of priority for those very vote for those very voters. It's a complete betrayal, and it explodes any hope people may have had that the Labour Party was going to be serious about getting in to grips with immigration. Now, the one good thing he's got in this policy announcement we'll have later today is that he wants to actually speed up the processing of those who are already here. That's a good thing because we have a backlog of 140 thousand people. The rate at which they're being processed is tiny, 1% only get getting processed, and most scandalously, and I'm amazed that nobody in the media picks up on this, we approve 74% of all I pick applications. up on it all the time. Yeah, Whereas where France remarkable. and Germany approves about 5%. Exactly. A huge... Yeah, you know, we're, we're being taken for fools. I'm sure, I'm sure you're not going to see any decline in that percentage of approvals under a Labour government um, that then, you, then you, have, you have at the moment. But the reality is you need to have a deterrent. Now, there are many problems with the Rwanda plan, primarily the fact that it's being clogged up in the courts by refugee groups and by activist lawyers. But on principle, it's an excellent policy. My own preference, actually, was to use one of the British overseas territories. That way you would negate any need for to clog things up in the court if we were in charge. The Ascension Islands, um, a wonderful idea to, to set up there, a migrant camp and a migrant processing centre using a cruise ship moored off the coast of Britain to actually pick up all immigrants, all migrants, asylum seekers, put them onto the cruise ship when it's full up. You sail it down to the Ascension Islands and you build the infrastructure there, just as the Australians did with Nauru, which was also thousands of miles away from Australia. That would have been a far better proposal. But, you know, one of the other great problems is that in this proposal of uh, Keir Starmer that we're here today, his main focus seems to be upon tackling the gangs that are facilitating these crossings. And the reality is that is the worst thing you can focus on because there will always be another gang to fill it up. And the fact that he actually doesn't understand the fact that there are many more gangs willing to, waiting in the wings to fill those vacant spots, proves that they simply don't have a clue. And these are such basic facts that it leaves me in, you know, in a state of dismay as to what's going to be in the next, uh, in the next term of office if it is a Labour government. Uh, indeed. Now, uh, right now, the Supreme Court is sitting in judgment. We await uh, its verdict with uh, bated breath. Uh, I mean, in the next couple of days, uh, we should get a decision uh, which will be a game changer. Uh, if the Supreme Court says the Rwanda scheme can go ahead, I mean, I'm assuming that pretty soon after that, we'll start taking planes off for Eastern well, Africa. Well, I, 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 do you expect... What do you think the verdict will be? Uh, will it be yes or will it be so this no? Is, yeah, well, this is the third day of the de of the deliberations. We're not going to get a ruling until November, even though this is the first, this is the final day. But the government is cautiously optimistic of a victory. Uh, Lord Reid, who's president of the Supreme Court, has previously expressed his dismay at the overreach of the European Court of Human Rights mm -hmm. and the overreach of human rights legislation. His deputy, Lord Hodge, similarly inclined. So there's every reason to believe that the government will win. But the, the earliest we can imagine flights actually taking off, if there is a win for the government, is in February. But even in February, things aren't necessarily going to be over because the European Court Wait of Human second. Rights... Wait a second. <laughs> If we get the, human, the Supreme Court decision in November, I mean, we're led to believe they'll make the decision this week, but uh, no one in this country ever wants to do anything uh, speedily, do they? They want to take ages in the political process. It's so slow. So, anyway, they're going to so, make the decision this week. We'll find out in November. Why would we wait until February to take planes off? Why wouldn't they take off in November? 
Well, because there, well, there are various governmental reasons why that is to be. See, there you go. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they haven't explained to me. But, but what they've told me is February is the earliest. Perhaps they have to have hearings on, on each individuals. But even in February, the earliest date we have so far, the European Court could still impose an interim measure to halt those flights. Luckily, we have a trump card now because we now have this illegal migration act that the government quite correctly brought in. So Alla Braverman can actually. Um, exempt us from that. But even that use of that is going to be challenged in the courts too. And all the time we're getting closer and closer to the election and the Tories were counting on there being a, a good number of migrants being transported to, uh, to Rwanda in time for the general election and it looks ever more likely that there'll be a, a trickle, if, if any at all, going by that point. Why don't we just leave the European Convention on Human Rights, then we could take the planes off whenever we want, like the sovereign nation that we voted for. It's, uh, a, very, it's a very attractive idea. Unfortunately, as much as I like it too, the problem is it's tied into the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland and also our new trade and cooperation agreement we have with the EU would make things like extradition and uh, criminal and, you know, dealing with criminals far more complicated. We do have this trump card for the Illegal Migration Act that can exempt us from, from rulings. I just hope that that goes through unchallenged. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is that, that uh, Suella Bravan, the Home Secretary, Kemi Badenoch, the Business Secretary, have both come right out and said it. We should leave the European Convention on Human Rights, make our own so sovereign decisions. Prime Minister comes in and says uh, we should use the clause in the Illegal Immigration Act uh, that would allow us to over rule the ECHR. Now, I'm thinking if we try to overrule a decision by the ECHR, all hell will break loose. I, I think we should just leave. The well, Prime Minister... all hell will definitely break loose either way. We, we, go, <laughs> we go about that. That's I true. Think, <laughs> I, I think more important, actually, is we need to actually revisit the institutions and the conventions that were established after World War II that got us into this mess. The 1951 Convention on Refugees, for example. Mm. These were all designed for at a time when migration didn't cross over continents but happened within regions, you know? And I, fully understandably, we needed to accommodate the Poles and the Jews and others who were displaced mm -hmm. and couldn't return back to, to the communist Eastern Europe, for example. But we're in a different world altogether now. We need to, to get rid of that and devise a new convention on refugees that's fit for the 21st century and ideally limits migrants to within the region. So if you are migrants from Africa, you are rehoused within Africa. Uh, yes, exactly. And Sir Labrum, of course, had a point. Uh, why are we governed uh, by a convention on refugees uh, caused, uh, formed by the... United Nations in 1951. It was to deal with the people who were made homeless, refugees in the slipstream of World War II, 1951. And that's what governs our migration policies. That is ridiculous.